Hi, I'm Paige. And I'm Andre. We're excited to spend this time with you. We want to talk a bit about communication, or more specifically, how we listen. Paige, have you ever told someone a story and felt they didn't get what you were saying? Yes, I have. So one time I was talking with my mom and I referred back to something I told her earlier and she had no idea what I was talking about. So I had to tell her the whole story all over again. Oh no, what a story. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? God always hears us and he gets us. Let's learn more about that in today's God story. How does Moses make his coffee? He brews it. Hi, I'm Michaela. It's nice to see you. So when I was in my last year of high school, all of the students met with the teachers to discuss whether we liked the program, didn't like it, what was good, what was bad, and all of a sudden, all the students started talking. So it was hard to tell if the teachers could hear my ideas. And that leads me to today's big idea which is God always hears us. Sometimes it can be hard to tell if God hears us because we don't always get a vocal response. But God listens and responds to us in small ways. See, God has this plan that is so big and so much better than our own. So today we are diving back into the story of Moses. So Moses was born during a time where the Egyptians had enslaved the Israelites. And the Egyptian king did not want the Israelite population to grow any larger. So he created a rule that said that all Israelite baby boys had to be killed. So Moses' mother was really creative. She put him in a basket and hid him in the reeds by the river. But then the king's daughter found him and raised him as her own. So Moses grew really curious about his people, the Israelites, and eventually he left. But then God spoke to him in a burning bush. And so Moses went back to Egypt to help free his people from slavery. So Moses, along with his brother Aaron, were leading the Israelite people out of Egypt and into the wilderness to the promised land. But the Israelite people kept on complaining. They were so hungry and they thought that Moses was trying to starve them. But even though they were complaining, God heard them. So Moses and Aaron told the people, you will see that it was God who is leading you out of Egypt, not us. And so while Aaron was talking, this amazing cloud appeared in the desert. It was the Lord. So let's see what the Lord said to Moses. So we are reading from Exodus. And did you know that Exodus means a large departure of people, which is basically what the Israelites did. So let's see what he said. I have heard the people of Israel talking about how unhappy they are. Tell them, when the sun goes down, you will eat meat. In the morning, you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. That evening, quail came and covered the camp. In the morning, the ground around the camp was covered with dew. When the dew was gone, thin flakes appeared on the desert floor. They looked like frost on the ground. The people of Israel saw the flakes. They asked each other, what's that? They didn't know what it was. Moses said to them, it's the bread the Lord has given you to eat. God loved his people and wanted to provide for them. So he sent quail, which is like a medium-sized bird for them to eat in the evening, and this flaky thing called manna for them to eat in the morning, which from the Bible kind of tastes like a wafer and honey. Then the Lord said, gather as much food as you need for today but don't gather any food for the next day. See, God wanted the Israelites to know that he could provide for them, that they needed to put their trust in him. But some people didn't listen and they collected food for the next day. But when they woke up that morning, all of their food was rotten. Each day they gathered enough food for the day. But on the sixth day, they collected enough food for two days so that they could take one day off which they called the Sabbath. Some people didn't collect enough food for two days. So on the seventh day, they didn't have any food. So they went out to try to find manna, but there was none there, just like God had said. They didn't learn. They needed to learn to trust God. The Israelites ate manna for 40 years until they got to the promised land, but we'll get to that later. So the Israelites were going wherever God was telling them to go and eventually they ended up in a place called Rephidim. But there was no water. So the people kept on complaining, saying that Moses was trying to make them die of thirst, but God heard them. So Moses cried out to God for help, and the Lord answered. He told Moses to take his walking stick and hit it against a rock and water would come out of it. And guess what? It did. Moses listened and it showed the Israelites that when they listened to God, God would provide for them. Sometimes, like the Israelites, we can forget that God always hears us. The Israelites had to be reminded over and over again that God was listening to them. And that's pretty true for us. 
It's so important to remember that God hears us. So whether you're praying for something, thanking God for something, or just talking to Him, God hears you. So take time each day to share with God. He hears you. And that's it for today. I'm Michaela, and I'll see you later. Hey friends, turn to the person next to you. And answer the following questions before the time runs out. Question time. What stood out to you from today's God story? What does it mean for your own life? God performed mind-blowing miracles to free the Israelites from slavery. And when they complained about not having enough food, He still showed love and patience by providing food they could literally pick up every morning. That's better than a drive through God listens to our hearts and He knows what we need. Absolutely. Well, let's check in with our friend Maya. She has a fun story to share. Yes, watch this. Hey everybody, I'm Chris and today I'm here with Maya. And we've decided that we're going to have a little bit of a camping experience. You like to camp, right? Yes, I do. Cool. I like to camp a lot. Awesome. So today we're going to pitch a tent, roast some marshmallows, and just talk a little bit about camping. Great. Right. So what is it that you love about camping? Well, I love the peace and the quiet. I also love the wilderness. And I love to camp with my family. But I also love the adventure of camping. Cool, cool. For me, I love the food. I love to make bannock and marshmallows over the fire. I think it's so good. Yeah. So you went camping in Botswana, right? Yes, I did. We were on an overnight safari. And um, earlier that day, it was kind of scary because we had seen all of these lions eating and stuff. Then that night, we were in a small little tent with no protection whatsoever from the wilderness around us. And I heard noises, and I thought that there was a lion outside, but actually it wasn't. Oh, wow. What was it? It was actually um, just the wind blowing against the side of the tent and the flaps of the tent uh, blowing in the wind and making noises. Wow. I would have been scared, too. I've never been camping in another country, but then a couple of years ago, I was camping here in Canada, and late at night, me and my friends heard some noises outside of our tent too, and it was actually a bear. And we were being silly, and we hadn't put our food away, so he came to eat all our food, and we were so scared, we couldn't even move, just in our tent, listening to this big bear go through all of our stuff, and he made a big mess. So what did you do? Well, for a while, I just kind of sat up in my tent like this. I couldn't even move. I was so scared. But then I realized I should pray about this and ask God to kind of give me some strength and bravery so that I can at least go back to sleep because I know we shouldn't go out there and mess with this bear. And so we did that. We started to pray and kind of relax a bit and we kind of put it into God's hands. And he kept us safe. In the morning, we went out and saw the big mess because this bear had a picnic. All of our food was everywhere, but at least we were okay. That must have been scary. It was. It was pretty scary. Once, for my seventh birthday, I went white water canoeing down the Madawaska River. It was kind of scary at times with the bigger rapids. When I was scared going down a rapid, I would pray and ask God to help us not tip over. And in the end, I didn't tip over once. Wow. And you guys would camp? Yeah, then we would stop for the night in a little clearing, whatever one we could find by mm -hmm. the side of the river, stay there for the night, and then in the morning get back into our canoes and continue along the river. Wow, I've always wanted to try that, but I've been a little too scared to go for it. But you know what? Whenever we're scared in life, God can help us with that. So whether we think there's a big scary animal outside of our tent, or we're about to go down a big river with these crazy rapids, God can be there to help us get through it. I have a friend, and she has this really serious disease. She prays to God, and God gives her strength when she's feeling scared about it. God's always there to help us when we ask Him for help. Mm -hmm. well, I don't know about you, but I would love some more of those marshmallows. Should we go to the fire? Good idea. Okay, let's go. 
Okay, your marshmallows? Okay. Wow, Chris, Maya, and their friends had so much fun at the campfire. Yeah, and I love that both of them could share on how when they prayed when they were scared, God heard their prayers and gave them peace. Yes, God knows what we need. He's always there, and He hears us. Absolutely. Well, let's break into our small groups now and see what this looks like in our lives. <laughs> 